Yeah, this is a great and broad question because there are many health risks that U.S. coal miners face, and they both face kind of health risks from immediate causes of injury, but also of long-term causes of illness, um, both acute and chronic. At the Miner Center in Chicago, where I'm based, we really focus on non-malignant respiratory diseases, things like the pneumoconioses, like black lung, that also includes progressive massive fibrosis, but also things like COPD, chronic bronchitis, and emphysema. Miners, though, are also exposed to a number of carcinogens in the workplace, such as diesel exhaust, and so we are also interested in certain malignancies, especially lung cancer in this population. The other kind of aspect that's been less well studied, but I think is an emerging area, is cardiovascular um, disease among miners, since there are a number of stressors in the mine environment, loud and constant noise, shift work, high pressure work environments, all that have cardiovascular implications that we're interested in. So it's a whole range of things, really. Sure, so the first one was kind of a larger scale study of U.S. coal miners who have participated in our national surveillance program, which is run by the National um, Institute for Occupational Safety and Health, or NIOSH. And these are miners who have participated in that surveillance program and then later at the end of their career applied for federal benefits because of um, disabling lung disease. And so this population of miners is somewhat unique in that we have more health information on them than we do other sets of, of coal miners in the States. Um, what we did is we asked for death, cause of death data from the National Death Index in the States, received that data, and then looked at um, the proportion of people dying from specific diseases. And again, as I referenced earlier, we looked especially closely at those non-malignant respiratory diseases like the pneumoconioses, COPD, emphysema, but also lung cancer and heart disease. Um, and so we kind of looked at whether or not the proportion of minors dying from different causes has changed over time. And so this time period spans about 1970 to the present. Um, in the second study that we've done, we looked at a population of deceased minors who submitted their lungs for autopsy to the National Institute for Occupational Safety and Health. And in this study, we had a pathologist determine which type of progressive massive fibrosis these minors died of. So not all minors had PMF at time of death, but of those who did, we wanted to know which kind. Was it predominantly coal? Was it predominantly silica? Or was it a mixed form of PMS? So in, in this later study, this autopsy study, one of the driving hypotheses of the recent epidemic of progressive massive fibrosis is increased exposure to silica in the workplace. And so this study was really hoping to look at that to see whether or not the type of PMF that minors are dying from more recently um, has changed to a more silica predominant type. Great question. Um, so the first study, this kind of larger scale study of about 34,000 deceased minors showed that the proportional mortality from non-malignant respiratory diseases, including the pneumoconioses, COPD, emphysema, chronic bronchitis, has increased among minors born after 1950. So we kind of looked at birth cohort as a way to measure more recent minors versus old minors who had um, mined in earlier times. And so what we're seeing is that as we move forward across time, we're seeing an increased proportional mortality from the pneumoconiosis, specifically co-workers pneumoconiosis, silicosis, and COPD. Um, for lung cancer, the signal was slightly more mixed in that only in this latest birth cohort, minors born after 1940, did we see an increase in lung cancer death among the oldest minors. And so again, this is, this is getting at maybe that there's a change in the workplace exposures to carcinogens and more recent minors. And so that's an area of kind of active investigation for us. Um, yeah, so, so what we're seeing is, is in line with what we're seeing from national surveillance data and other data sets that indicates that we are seeing a growing disease burden from the pneumoconioses as well as COPD, chronic bronchitis, emphysema in this population more, among younger and more recent minors. 
in the study of autopsy data, what was really interesting is that we looked at the type of PMF across time and saw that silicotic PMF, so PMF that's driven primarily by silica exposure, has increased significantly in recent years, so post the late 1990s compared to earlier miners. And what this really does is lend support for that hypothesis that there has been an increased exposure to silica in the workplace that may be driving this um, recent PMF epidemic that we're seeing. This question is not only great for understanding the mortality trends, but also the, the recent disease trends that we're seeing, because this is a non-curable, irreversible disease. And so what we're seeing is that the factors driving increased incidence of disease are likely those also driving increased mortality from this disease. The main hypotheses, again, as I've mentioned, are increased exposure to silica, which is much more toxic to the lungs than just coal dust. Um, and this has to do with the, ge the particular geology being mined today. One of the, the leading hypotheses is that a lot of the thick seamed coal in the states has been mined. And so, and mining machinery has become much more efficient and powerful and able to take a lot of rock strata above and below those coal seams. Um, and still filter out the coal and be profitable. But by taking more overburden, that rock above and below the coal, you end up with much more silica dust because that's often quartz. Um, so increased mechanization, more powerful tools that can be creating finer dust that can lodge more deeply into the lungs. I think there's also hypotheses um, around labor practices, longer work days, longer work weeks which allow less time for miners to kind of clear their lungs at the end of a work week um, to clear some of their lungs of this dust burden that they've been exposed to. So all of these together are really the hypotheses driving the increased incidence and mortality um, from especially this most severe form of, of black lung progressive massive fibrosis. This is a great question. And we are currently working on a study right now in which we are trying to understand the mineralogic composition of dust in miners' lungs. And that means not only what type of minerals are in there, are they, is it mostly silica, silicates, metals, other types of minerals, but also looking at the size and shape because that it has implications for toxicity. Um, and comparing kind of recent cases of miners with progressive massive fibrosis to historical cases to see whether or not that dust in the lungs really has changed over time and could be driving some of this severe disease. So that's one of the active areas of research is really understanding the dust in the lungs. Um, but more broadly, and I think the message that we always try to hammer home is that surveillance is incredibly important for this population. Um, and for understanding the health risks in this population. Our national surveillance program is a voluntary program and does not usually capture the majority of the workforce in any given year, but it's incredibly important because it captures things like not only lung disease status, but um, cardiovascular diseases, general health of minors. Um, and so it'd be incredibly important to encourage minors to participate because that gives us a kind of an enriched understanding of the health of all minors, not those that participate thinking perhaps they have a health issue and would like to be checked out, um, but would help us understand the broader population. And really that's so key for understanding and, and detecting early disease and then potentially removing those minors so that their disease does not progress. That is another area of active research that we're working on is understanding why some people progress to a very severe form of disease and why others don't and what factors drive that so that we can better um, prevent progression in this, in this population. <laughs>